Hi everyone and welcome back. Now in today's video we are going to discuss about the AWS Global Accelerator. Now before we go ahead and understand more about the service, let's look into the typical challenge where the traffic flows through the public network. So nowadays public networks such as internet can be congested. Now you know that almost everyone uses internet for their day to day activities. So network congestion is one of the common patterns that you will see. So generally each hop between and within the public network can include some amount of performance risk. So let's understand this with a simple diagram where you have a client on the left, you have a EC2 instance on the right and the client wants to communicate to the EC2 instance. Now client can be in a different country, EC2 instance can be a different country altogether and the traffic flows through the internet. So you have a public internet. So when you discuss about the high level workflow, the client goes ahead through the local ISP, the traffic might flow through a network, then another network, then another set of network, then another set of network and at the end it might reach the EC2 instance and same goes with the return traffic. So each hop that is introduced here can lead to certain set of performance risk. Now you can also easily see what are the hops that are involved for the packets that flows from the source to destination using various tools like traceroute. So let's also go ahead and quickly look into it. Now for today's video, we are going to have a quick demo associated with the trace route to understand the number of hops that are involved so that we can have better understanding about this performance risk. Now within here, you can add a specific domain name. Let me just add a kplabs.in and it will basically show the amount of hops from different set of locations. So let's quickly wait for a moment here. All right, so we got our result back and from here you see that there are multiple set of hops that are involved for the packet to traverse from source to destination. Now, in fact, you can also check it from your own workstation. Again, this is not part of the exams, but I'm just showing you for better understanding. So if you're making use of Windows, then you have the trace RT tool which gives you similar results. So it will basically show you the hop wise details associated with the packet traversal. In case if you're making use of Mac, then instead of trace RT, you have a tool called as trace route, which will typically show you the hops. So the main learning for this slide is that for a packet to travel from source to destination, there are multiple set of networks where it needs to flow through and at any given network, there can be certain set of bottlenecks which can lead to performance risk. And in order to overcome this issue, AWS has released a service of Global Accelerator. At a high level overview, Global Accelerator allows you to improve the performance of your application for local and global users. Now, one of the benefits of Global Accelerator is that in here the traffic travels over well monitored congestion free redundant AWS global network towards the endpoint. So this can be better explained with this specific diagram where on top you have a typical workflow without Global Accelerator. As we're discussing traffic from source to destination from the local ISP, it can go through multiple set of networks and same goes with the return traffic. Now at any given point of time, it can happen that one of the network is quite congested and this will lead to performance degradation. In order to avoid that, Global Accelerator allows the traffic to flow through the AWS network itself, which is congestion free and AWS takes care and ensures that there are no congestion and performance is almost guaranteed here. All right. So I hope with this, you understood the benefits that Global Accelerator provides. Now, one more benefit of Global Accelerator is that it can have multiple set of endpoints across regions. For example, here you see that we have a Global Accelerator service and there are two endpoints. One is in the North Virginia region, second one is in the Mumbai region. This type of architecture is supported. Now, when you have a multi-region kind of an architecture, the Global Accelerator will automatically route the traffic to the healthy endpoint that is nearest to the user. For example, Let's say that there is a user from India and this user sends a request to the global accelerator. Now this request can be forwarded to the EC2 instance in North Virginia region or the EC2 instance in the Mumbai region. However, since the user is from India, ideally the traffic towards the EC2 in Mumbai will be less congested and overall it will be much more faster. And hence global accelerator will forward that specific traffic to the EC2 instance in Mumbai region. 
So when you have global set of users from different countries and you also have multiple set of endpoints across different AWS regions, using Global Accelerator makes things much more simpler. So let's do one thing. Before we proceed further, let's go ahead and look into it from demo perspective. Now for today's video, I have a Global Accelerator that is deployed. You see it is in deployed status. And for this Global Accelerator, there are two specific endpoints. So if we'll quickly look here, there is one endpoint in the AP Southeast one region. Second endpoint is in the US East one region. Let me also show you what the endpoints are. So in the AP Southeast one region, which is Singapore region, I have a EC2 instance called as Singapore EC2 that is running. And also in the Virginia region, I have a instance called as Virginia EC2 that is running. Now let's copy the public IP of Virginia EC2. And within the web browser, I'll just add the IP address. Now in the output here, you see we are getting North Virginia region. Similarly, if we copy the IP address of the Singapore region EC2, let's replace it over here. This time we get output of Singapore region. So from the instance, we can easily identify which instance belongs to which region. Now this global accelerator similar to this specific diagram is associated with two EC2 instance, one in North Virginia and one in Mumbai. If I'll have to show you, if I'll open up one of the endpoint groups, you will see that we have the EC2 instance and this EC2 instance ends with the ID of E72. So let's quickly verify E72 is of the Singapore region. And similarly, we have one more endpoint. The second endpoint is in the US East one region. Now, as we're discussing, once the traffic flows to the global accelerator, we can then determine which EC2 instance the global accelerator is sending the traffic to. Let's quickly find it out. So I'll go back to the global accelerator page. There are two set of IP addresses that are provided. You can use any one of them. Let me use the first one and let me send the traffic to this IP. And immediately here you see the traffic is routed to Singapore region. Now note that I am based out of India. Singapore is much more nearer than that of the overall North Virginia region. Now let's also go ahead and send the traffic to the global accelerator from different region. So I'll use a website which allows us to perform some curl commands online. I assume that the servers are based out of US. So I'll do a curl. And again, we'll use the same endpoint of the global accelerator. Again, it does not really matter. You can use any of the IP address and I'll add the IP address here. Now let's see which region the global accelerator sends the traffic to. So this time you see the traffic went to the North Virginia region. So different set of users across the globe will be directed to the healthy endpoint that is nearest to your user. And this in turn can also lead to performance improvements. Now, one more thing that you need to keep in mind of is that global accelerator also verifies the health of the endpoint. So it should not be for example, there is a EC2 instance in the Mumbai, which is associated with a global accelerator, but the EC2 instance is down. Now, if global accelerator is sending the traffic to the instance, which is not working, then it will lead to bad experience for the users. And this is the reason why global accelerator also periodically it verifies the health of the endpoint. And in case if the endpoint is not working, then global accelerator will send the traffic to another set of endpoint. Now let's also quickly look into it from demo perspective. So let's do one thing. Let's go ahead and stop the EC2 instance in the North Virginia region. Or in fact, let's do it for the Singapore region. It will be much more easier. I'll stop this EC2 instance. All right. So our instance is stopping. Now global accelerator through its health checks will be able to determine in a while that the instance in the Singapore region, for an example, is not working. So now all the requests should go to the North Virginia region instance. So let's quickly try it out. So I'll copy the IP of global accelerator and from the terminal, I'll quickly do a curl. And this time you see the traffic is going to the North Virginia region. Let me try once more. All the time the traffic will go to the Virginia region. Great. So I hope with this, you understood the primary benefits that global accelerator provides. Not only it allows the traffic to flow through the AWS global network, which is congestion free. It also sends the request to the healthy endpoint that is nearest to the user and it also performs health checks. Now, before we conclude, there are certain important pointers that we need to keep a note of. 
First one is that global accelerator supports various kind of endpoints. For example, it supports the application load balancer as a endpoint. It supports network load balancer, EC2 instance, elastic IP addresses as well. Now for today's video, we had taken a demo of EC2 instance, but you can also have ALBs, NLBs, the EIPs in case if you'd like. Now, before we conclude few points that we need to keep a note of, first one is that AWS Accelerator can detect an unhealthy endpoint and take it out of the service in less than one minute. Along with that, Global Accelerator can also integrate with the AWS Shield for the distributed denial of service protection. Now, before we conclude, there is one interesting thing that I wanted to show you. So AWS provides a specific speed comparison tool, which allows us to verify the overall network performance between the internet and when the global accelerator is used. So this is the URL speedtest.globalaccelerator.aws. So here you can specify the file size. In fact, let me just choose as 5 MB and we'll just start it. So it will show us the comparison between multiple regions, which is very helpful. So let's quickly wait for a moment here. Now at this stage, the data for the North Virginia region has populated where the global accelerator here is 41% faster. So let's quickly wait for a moment here. All right. So the data chart for other locations are also available. Now you'll see for Frankfurt, it is 18% faster here, Ireland 30% faster and Tokyo 23% faster. However, one more thing that you'll see is that for Oregon, it is 11% slower. Now note that global accelerator is not some kind of a magic box where all of the traffic will be always faster. There are a lot of other regions, maybe ISP and other aspects like the location of users due to which sometimes you will see that there is a performance degree at a global accelerator level as well. However, for most of the use cases, you will see that global accelerator is much more faster here. For example, in Singapore, it is 13% faster and Sydney seems to have broken the record among these where it is 84% faster. So as you're discussing for most of the users, global accelerator will prove to be extremely useful. So that's the high level overview. And with this, we'll conclude today's video.